Hello, hello, intellectuals and gamers, and welcome to the Corner of Truth. In this video, we are seeking to answer the question of whether or not treasure rooms are worth it. And if they're not, we're going to figure out how they could be. But before we could jump right on into the treasure rooms, we actually have to figure out the criteria. How do we determine whether a room is worth it or not? Well, we look at the loot. Up on the screen now is going to be a picture of the loot tables of treasure rooms, and you can see there's a pretty small amount of things you can get. The big two are going to be vault gear and vault jewels. Now, for the vault gear, the treasure rooms are pretty special because the minimum rarity they could roll is common, and the maximum is actually Omega. Omega rarity vault gear is exclusive to treasure room chests, which is very exciting. So, the amount of Omega... Epics and rares and commons are going to determine how good the treasure rooms absolutely are. We're obviously going to be wanting more epics, rares, and omegas than we are commons, with hopefully a skew towards epics and omegas, since treasure rooms can be pretty expensive and difficult to find. And for the jewels, we're going to need to figure out whether the jewels are good or not. And I'm using a pretty blanket simple criteria, and it might be different for everyone, but I'm going to say the most average way to determine whether a jewel is good is whether its size is 25 or below, and the modifier it has isn't garbage. So, like a copious 0.5%, yeah, that's a bad jewel, no one's ever going to use that, even if it's a 10 size. So, that is how I determined whether a jewel was good, or whether a jewel was bad. There's also treasure sand that we need to talk about, that can drop old notes and legendary bounties. To be perfectly honest, legendary bounties just give you more loot that you can get inside of a treasure room, except they do give you a big bonus of XP, so that's pretty cool. And old notes are just vanity, so I'm not really counting those. And the rest of the stuff that can actually come out of treasure sand is just pog gems or echo gems. So the treasure sand is kind of a non-reward in this discussion, since the legendary bounties are pretty good, but mostly just for leveling, and old notes are vanity, and the rest is just gems that you can get from other types of vaults. The final criteria that we're going to be using to determine whether treasure rooms are worth it or not is their unique loot. Our final category, and one of the more important ones actually, is unique items. The treasure room has a few items that are unique to its loot table. I'm going to put the loot table back up on the screen and highlight the items that we're looking for. That is the opportunistic focus, the eye of avarice, the sour orange, the moat of sanctity, the chaos catalyst, the treasure chest scroll, and the resilient focus. The treasure chest scroll really isn't, like, a great thing to find. It's either decorative or can turn into a few soul shards, but still, it's fun to find, and it is unique to the treasure chest. Okay, awesome. We know what we're looking for. Now it's time to look for it. And obviously, one treasure room isn't enough. I decided to run 20. Yeah, 20 treasure rooms, even in creative mode, gets a little tedious, but I figured it would give us a big enough sample size to really determine what we were going for, especially because... 20 felt like enough that anything would be statistically accurate, but also not so much that it's completely unreasonable that you could run that in a survival world. You could run 20 treasure keys over the course of a playthrough in Vault Hunters, so consider this hopefully average luck. I should loop back to what I just said about them being pretty tedious to run in creative. They're even more tedious to run in survival, so they're already kind of losing points because right now treasure rooms are kind of boring to find. You look for them forever, you hopefully find the right key, and when you do, you just open a chest. So hopefully in the future, there's a lot more fanfare around it and a bit more of a game to it. Semantics aside, however, let's get into the numbers. What did we find? As far as the actual loot went, we found 45 common, 38 rare, 10 epic, and 3 omega pieces of gear spread across the many different pieces of gear. Now, I'm not going to roll any of these, I'm just considering their base rarity, because, well, you could make bulk gear better. And as you can see, not the most impressive haul. I was really hoping for common and omega to be the ends of an extreme, like a bell curve, right, where we see more rares and epics, but it really just seems like there's a lot of common, there's a decent amount of rare, a pretty good amount of rare, few epic, and almost no omega, which is really sad to see. So if you're looking for Valkyr, it might actually be better to just craft it yourself, or do ornate loot hauls, because the numbers work out to only have a few pieces of gear 
per room. I noticed about five or six pieces of gear per room, and the jewels aren't looking much better. 44 of them fit the criteria of 25 size or lower and an actually decent use modifier. And 162 of them were above that or had bad modifiers overall. The total of 206 jewels makes a lot of sense because you get about 10 jewels per treasure room with an average of eight of those jewels not being very good and two of them being pretty good. I will say we did get a perfect hammer size jewel. Yeah, a perfect 10 size jewel with hammering on it, or rather the jewel size was perfect. The jewel wasn't perfect rarity. It was a 10 size with plus one hammering, which was really cool. I don't know if that was just an extremely lucky moment for me, or if that was because I was in a treasure room. You'll have to let me know down in the comments, but keep in mind, I did get two legendary rolls, but only one of them was on a jewel that had a decent size. And now for our final criteria, unique items. The gear was a little disappointing, and the jewels definitely could have been better, but there were a few winners in there. So how did we do on unique items? Well, eh. Not that good. If I open our book here, you can see we got 24 unique items, including bounties and notes. Without bounties and notes, we got eight. These items right here. Three Moat to Sanctity, a Resilient Focus, a Chaos Catalyst, an Opportunistic Focus, and two Sour Oranges. Except, not quite. You might be wondering why I have a Shard Pouch in my inventory. Well... That's because technically, we only got three items. Yep, I lied to you. Only the Moat of Sanctity and the Treasure Chest Scroll are actually unique to Treasure Rooms. The rest of it, you can buy on the Black Market. But of course, Treasure Rooms would be the better way to achieve those items, right? Well, I knew my testing would not be complete unless I traded and traded and traded. But how would I know how many soul shards to use for each treasure room? That was pretty simple. According to the community guide on the official Vault Hunters Discord server, the average price of a blank key is five and a half thousand soul shards. And considering that keys cost a lot more than just a blank key, I figured giving myself five and a half thousand soul shards per key I ran was pretty fair, especially considering it's a lot easier to get five and a half thousand soul shards than it is to make a treasure key. So I gave myself 110,000 soul shards and traded and traded and traded and traded and traded some more. Traded till my fingers hurt and we got 24 items. Yeah, just absolutely blowing the treasure rooms out of the water. Nine Chaos Catalysts, three Eyes of Avarice, three Resilient Focuses, five Sour Oranges, and four Opportunistic Focuses. I always made sure to trade at the lowest possible value as much as I could, and this is what we came out with, meaning that every four and a half thousand soul shards you spend, you'll get one of these treasure room items. Now, it is worth noting that Motes of Sanctity cannot be found in the soul shard shop, but all it does is remove the curses from a vault crystal, something that Motes of Purity do. This one just does it more efficiently. I'm not here to claim that Motes of Sanctity are useless, but they do put Motes of Purity in treasure rooms, so it's just more of the same. Oh, and if you're wondering how many treasure rooms it takes on average to get one of the unique items, it's about four to five treasure rooms. Four to five treasure rooms to get one of the unique items. That just doesn't seem balanced very well. So unfortunately, with all that data, I'm going to have to say that treasure rooms are just not worth it in update 8. They don't pack enough punch considering the cost of the keys. But they could be better. Very easily, they could be better. And I have two solutions. One of them is simple, and one of them is complicated. So we're going to start with the simple one. The simple one is just a straight buff. Buff rare and epic and omega vault gear rarities. Make common and omega the extremes of a bell curve with a skew towards rare and epic. That would be huge. Buff the size of jewels or I guess nerf this. I mean, make them smaller. Make the jewels overall smaller. Make them spawn smaller. Even with the amount of flawless and perfect jewels that spawn inside of a treasure room, most of them are size 70 or above. They're pretty useless. You're not going to put that on your tools. Even a size 50, you're probably not going to put on your tools. So make jewels spawn with smaller sizes. That would be huge. And another one, just buff the rarity of all the special stuff. 
You don't even have to remove them from the Soul Shard shop, although maybe I would make them less common, but buff their rarity in the treasure room. Make the treasure room the most optimal way to achieve that stuff. And I will say lost bounties are pretty good because, I mean, it's a lot of XP and you do get a bit of extra loot, so they're pretty fun. And the old notes, they're a vanity thing. They serve their purpose. So that right there would be really good at making the treasure rooms as they are be a lot better in loot. But right now, treasure rooms don't feel very good. Finding them feels bad, and making them feels bad. And while I don't really have a good solution for finding the treasure rooms, I do have a pretty good one. The complicated one for making them feel better. Because right now, they're just a chest. They're not Vault Hunters 118, they're Vault Hunters 116, where you didn't have control. And although they're very predictable, they're still out of your hands. So my proposition, make keys like crystals. A key opens a treasure room vault and is modified by gems. In this system, there's no unmodifiable, there's no exhausted or curses or anything like that. You would make your blank key and then you would stack different gems on top of it to get different types of loot in different amounts and different rarities. So for example, if you put a stack of Laramar gems onto your key, it would roll modded loot, modded blocks and items, stuff you've already unlocked, right? No more, you know, mods you don't have because that causes problems. So the more stacks of Laramar gems you put into the key, the more it would spawn or the higher chance it would have to spawn that loot. This stuff would be way better later in the game when you have more mods or the more expensive things unlocked, so it kind of self-balances in that regard. You're not going to have, you know, level 10 people who get lucky with key pieces finding, you know, mechanism generator stuff. It would also allow people in the late game to skip tedious parts of mods. Say you want the fusion reactor from mechanism generators, but you don't want to have to go through the fission reactor process to get the polonium pellets. Well, if you put a lot of Laramar into your key, then perhaps Polonium Pellets will spawn in the treasure chest and you won't need to get the Fizzile stuff. If Valkyr is what you fancy, you could put stacks of Painite in for chances of spawning Valkyr, Valkyr crafting stuff like Netherite, Voltarite, Vault Ingots, maybe even Trinkets could spawn with Painite, who knows? Beniatite, of course, could get you Knowledge and Relic stuff for like booster packs, Knowledge Stars, Knowledge Essence, stuff like that. Alexandrite feels like it'd be really good to buff or even give the ability to roll the unique items. Since Alexandrite seems to be kind of a catch-all gem, seized in crafting trinkets and in rerolling stuff, why not give it the ability to give you special items? Wooded-Eye's an easy one, it gives you jewels! The more Wooded-Eye, the more chance you have of getting jewels. And of course that leaves us with Black Opal and Echo Gems. Well, those are pretty easy. Black Opal gives you item rarity, Echo Gems gives you item quantity, or at least some treasure room efficient of that, right? The more Echo Gems you invest, the more loot you get. The more Black Opal you invest, the rarer you get. This would allow high-level players to make high-level treasure rooms and low-level players to get a small boost, but something significant for the items they put into it. It's not just you get a key and you get items. You have to work for it. You keep it. You build it out. It's something you get excited for. The more gems you add to it, the more loot you're gonna get. And if you don't fancy the idea of using black opal and echo gems to give item rarity and item quantity, and you'd rather just the amount of gems you put into a key become the item rarity and item quantity for that segment, so like the more Laramar, the better and more modded blocks you get, well, then Alexandrite could give you a chance of getting rollables and trinkets, like catalysts, trinkets, duh, trinket scrap, mystery egg, stuff like that. Black Opal could give you the unique items, and Echo Gems could apply a cascading effect, a percentage chance that your chest duplicates. Now, the numbers here would have to be very small, right? and would have diminishing returns as you level up. And hopefully the math would work out to a way where like a level 20 character would reasonably not be able to create the same kind of key that a level 50 character could, in the sense that at level 20 you're not getting as many ores as you are at level 50. So as you level up, as you begin to get more ores in the vault, and as you begin to not need them for other things, you'll be able to make bigger, better, and badder keys. That certainly sounds a lot more fun to me. And hey, Thanks for making it to the end of the video, and please keep in mind, this is an alpha pack and the devs are doing an amazing job. With each update, things do get better, even if it's by a minor amount, and hopefully they might see this video or hear your suggestions, and we can make Vault Hunters 118 the best it could be. Remember to think critically, be kind, do your research, and like, comment, subscribe. Those last three are the most important.